we want to look into more detail regarding the names as they appear on birth certificates. You have mentioned to us that there have been several versions of these, in your case, from two countries. Yes. But quite apart from that, everyone would have several documents. You're saying this is a worldwide phenomenon. This is a worldwide phenomenon, and that is the uh, fully capitalized or all uppercase name in all uppercase text. So this doesn't just apply to people living in English-speaking no. countries where it's documents are released? No, it's global. It's global, and because all of it is written in maritime, because the planet is under military occupation since 1933. Maritime law? Maritime law, and maritime or admiralty law is military law. In other words, we are occupied by foreign governments or foreign corporations on our land, or on the land that, we, that we're living on, but the authorities that we perceive as authorities has got nothing to do with the countries that they control. So we are under a system of maritime law. Under control. Rather than land law? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Although we live on the land. Yes. So all commerce works on water law or on sea law and maritime law. And all trade works on land law. In other words, with your feet on the ground, you can only trade in value and not in commerce because all commerce is crime. And all crime is war. And what makes this very interesting is that should we have two competing products, somebody wins and somebody loses. And eventually we might go to war about whose product is the best. So once you go into the realm of commerce, you're working into the world of the dead. And dead is also spelled debt, D-E-B-T. Because when I say the word dead or debt, it sounds pretty similar. So the resonance of debt is equal to sin or equal to death. Because technically there can't be any debt. You can't owe anybody anything unless you've agreed to it. You see, I, I, I can't tell you you owe me something if you haven't done something to deserve that or, you know, if I haven't gotten any value from it. So on land and on trade, we're trading in value. But in commerce, you're trading in contracts and the, you're trading on agreements, not in value. And there's the interesting split between the two. That would involve an element of consent. Correct. Absolutely correct. No commerce can take place without consent. And this is where the, where the deception came in, initially with the birth certificates and birth certificates registration. If the parents knew they were selling their babies to a corporation, no corporation can force you to have contractual dealings with it. However, if you consent, that's the game changer. I take it that's what you're saying. Correct, but they can deceive you. And the way that they deceive you is by using the words on the pieces of paper and the way that they write your name. Now, as an example, I've got the, uh, the birth certificate that registrations that we've just shown, which is like this one here with just the name spelt, and you'll see between the name and the place name, which is the, the, the house I come from, uh, there's a huge gap in between, so the two are disconnected. Between the Christian name and the family name, or the surname? Yeah, the surname is really not a surname. This is the other deception. The, the surname is the serf name, the slave name. Because you see, in the ancient times, in Roman times, as an example, only slaves were allowed to marry. Royalty aren't allowed to marry, and if you look at royalty at the moment, they're all using their own names and they don't have surnames whatsoever. Why wouldn't the Queen use a surname? What is the Queen's surname? Who the hell knows? What's the Pope's surname? Who knows? <laughs> we all know the first names, but where, where the royalty surname? Prince Harry, Prince Harry who? Okay, Diana, Diana who? You see, so everybody goes on the, on, on the names and the Christian names and there's no surname because you don't have a surname. You've got a name that your family, the tribe or the clan came from or the place that you lived or the house that you're born into and that is what that name actually represents but in commerce that name represents the debtor. So when you refer to a surname as the surf name yeah. as in S-E-R-F yes. 
What about the theory that it is a serpent name or a surety name? Do you agree? Absolutely, 100%. Yes, that's right. And why it's the debtor in the trust account and the debtor in commerce is because of the sins of our fathers. You see, because the way that they created these documents, they've linked my father's family name to me because I came from that family and they called it a surname. It wasn't a surname, it wasn't his surname either. It was the place he was born from, or the house that he came from. It wasn't the surname. There is no such thing as a surname. But they forced us to adopt the surname by using it in, in, in... If they said, this is your slave name, this is where you must write it in. No, 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 no. You don't have a surname. And on all your birth certificates, the born certificate from the hospital, and the initial record from the hospital, as well as the documents used to register the birth. Now, I've got an example of it here. I can't go too much into it because it's pretty sloppy writing. But this is the document my parents filled in to register my birth. And this is legit. It comes from uh, the Department of Home Affairs in South Africa. And it's all there. And on this, it doesn't put where my name comes in a surname whatsoever. So with the registration of birth, the parents don't forward on the way that the form is filled in a surname that's linked to the name whatsoever. Because you've got a Christian name or a given name, and there's a reason why they call it the Christian name. Because that is the baby name in Christianity, but it's got nothing to do with religion. Uh, there are probably uh, people of other faiths, there might be Hindus or there might be Buddhists, that have got Christian names, but they're not Christians. So they use the terminology Christian name, because that's the baby name. So. By claiming back your Christianity, you claim back your Christian name. And that is the definition of being reborn. Mm -hmm. And it got really warped through religion when people went on to a bit of a bandwagon to become reborn and reborn. It had nothing to do with religion. Religion means to tie again. A ligament is, is, is like a sinew or, or a piece of muscle, a piece of string, lig ligare. And re is to, to, re, to do again and again. So religion is to, to bond again. And any religion, doesn't matter which one it is, is a bond. And those bonds also get created through baptismal certificates. Or for records into family Bibles. And uh, the people don't know when they use the family Bible. That's very good. The King James's Bible, whichever version you're using. That book is copyrighted. You don't own the copyright to the book. You don't own the copyright to a dictionary. You can't actually refer to or from anything that's copyrighted without the permission to do so. So yeah, in, in this whole entrapment thing, you know, we refer to books and Bibles and dictionaries things all the time. Technically, we shouldn't, because that is somebody's version of a particular document. It's not ours. We, we need permission to use it. So all their stuff, all the forms and things that they, they copyrighted, it, they laid it out, they designed it, but in the way that it's filled in, you can never ever have a surname attached to your name from any registration document because you didn't have one when you were born. You only had a Christian name. Your parents never called you by your surname as a child. They would never call you, hey Jones, 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 you know, they don't use your name. So the name that you are called upon when you were born, that would be your Christian name. And that's the only name you have. If you've got a second name, it should be spelt not in uppercase because it's a second name it's not a name are you referring there to the middle name such as second or middle yes yeah, third whatever they can't be spelt with a capital letter because you only have one name that's why they call it a middle name or a second name so what i'm saying here in short is that every person on the planet unless they know this and unless they've done what i call a live life claim which is the claim of your real name and your DNA, your ancestral heritage. Until you've done that and you understand how all of that works, you've never ever had a document presented to you since birth that had anything to do with you whatsoever. Because nobody has ever ever used your name correctly or used your address correctly. Because they write a, an address on an envelope, house number, this and that and whatever, on whichever street. But technically you can only live here. You can't have an address if you're a living being. So how the hell did we get to live in houses? We don't live in houses. We live inside ourselves. Yes. As, as, as living beings. And therefore, 
you can't put your address on a form. You can put in care of on a form, yes. You know, that's okay. But your true address can never, never be addressed as an address. But they've made us, in, through deceptive language, gotten us to fill in our address as house number this and this and whatever. And then obviously through language and the deception, a resident is a thing identified in the law dictionaries. A person is somebody that is personifying something else. You see, so here comes all the, 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 the uh, dictionaries and the legal def definitions of things. But technically, you can only be a man or a woman. And that's written in no law whatsoever. The old, old bills like the Magna Carta, and that included the word man or woman, usually just man. But none of the statutes, act, rules, regulations, anywhere on any government whatsoever on this planet has got the word man or woman written into it because they've got no consent and no mandate to do so. They may not work with a living or with a proper entity that's got any life in it because they're all dead corporations. Corporation comes from the word corpse, which means it's dead. And there's no jurisdiction between the living and dead unless you are consenting to go to a summons, like in a court, where a summons is calling up the dead, which is interesting.